Promises have been around in JavaScript for a while, implemented in different ways depending on the library you're using, but now we have a standard, and it's part of the language. Hello, my name is Thiago Tempo, and this is Tempo Coding. A promise is an object that represents a value that may not be available yet. It's used for asynchronous operations such as an HTTP request. When you have a promise, you have to guarantee that the request made will be completed. It may be concluded with success, in which case the expected value will be passed back, or it can be completed with a rejection, where a reason will be passed back. Most of the times, we won't be creating promises, unless you're creating a library. In most cases, we'll be receiving a promise as a response from, the, from a function. In this video, I'll be talking about both, how to deal with a promise object and how to create one. In any case, I think it will be simpler to start by explaining how to work with a promise object received from a function. I'll be using the Fetch API in the examples of this video. If you're not familiar with the Fetch API, it's very simple. It's an API to make AJAX calls, much like an XML HTTP request, but it's a lot simpler and easier to use. Fetch is a spec in progress, and at the time of the recording of this video, it does not have a full adoption from browser vendors, but you can still use it with the help of a polyfill. In the show notes of this video, you'll find a URL for the polyfill. In any case, this video is not about the Fetch API, but because Fetch is an API that works with promises, I'll be using it. So let's make a simple GET request using Fetch. To do that, all one have to do is to call the Fetch function and pass the desired URL as a parameter. What the Fetch function returns is a promise. So. Here I am making a GET request to a, re to a URL, and receiving a promise as a response, that is, of course, also known as an, as an AJAX request, and by nature, this is an asynchronous request. We don't know how long the request will take to complete, nor if it will be completed with success. To work with the success of a promise, we have to call the THEN method of that promise. The then method expects a callback function as a first parameter that will be called when the promise is resolved, and will pass the expected value as its parameter. In the case of the fetch function, the object passed as an argument is a response object. What is important to understand is that this is not a synchronous operation, so we don't know when the then function will be executed. Also, the flow will continue so we cannot expect to use the results of the fetch call right af after it's made. Meaning that I cannot have a statement right after the fetch call, hoping to use its return value. All statements that are in the same scope of the fetch call will be executed before the then function could be called. But that's the principle of asynchronous programming, and I'm sure you knew that, right? Okay. And what if the call fails? Let's say that there's a server error or a bad URL was informed. Well, the then function also accepts a second parameter where we can handle that error. Let's say we're calling a bad URL. If you supply a second argument to the then method, that function will be called, and a reason will be passed as a parameter. Now, in my opinion, there are two problems with this solution. First, the error handling function will only be called if there, is an, there was an error during the call of the first function being called, in this case, fetch. If there was an error during the execution of the then function, that wouldn't be handled. The second problem is that the code looks a little bit messy. Fortunately, there is a better way to handle errors. A promise also has a catch method, and both methods, then and catch, can be chained, which makes for a more readable code. So instead of passing two functions to the then method, we will only pass one to be called when the promise is resolved with the success. And then we also configure a catch method that will be called in the case of an error. So if we call a bad URL, we can see that the error is logged. 
Also, let's say we have an error inside of the then method. The catch function will also be able to handle that. One thing that we can do with promises is chain them. Just as, a, as an example, again with the fetch API, the response object has a text method that will return the text of the request made. The text method also returns a promise, so we can chain another call to a then method that will receive the value of this second promise. In this case, it will be the text from the AJAX call. Again, the catch method will be called if there's an error, and the advantage of using the catch method is that if we have an error during the AJAX call or in either one of the then methods, the error will be handled. That's it for using promises. Now, how about creating a new one? To create a new promise, all one have to do is call the new operator on a promise. The constructor of a promise accepts two arguments, a callback function to resolve the promise with success, and another function to reject the promise. In this example, I'm creating a new promise, and I'm generating a random number. If the number is a pair, the promise will be resolved with success. If it's not, it will fail. I'm also using setTimeout to simulate an asynchronous call. As you can see, creating a promise is very simple. If you ever happen to need to create a promise, but you already know the result value of that promise, you can use the shorthand promise.resolve. Let's see an example of returning a value from a promise using the syntax I've just demonstrated. Now, instead of writing a new promise accepting a callback and resolving it, one could just call promise.resolve. Both cases work the same. In the same line of thought, to reject the promise, one could use the shorthand promise.reject. There are two things left to talk about promises. That's the all method and the race method. The all method is used when we'd like to make multiple asynchronous calls and have a function to be called when all those calls were resolved. In this example, both calls are started asynchronously, and the then method is called when both are resolved with success. The responses parameter is also an array with the result of both promises. If any of those would fail, all promises are considered as failing, and the catch method will be called. Race works in the same way, with the only difference that only the first one to respond will be the one handled by the then function, and again, a rejection will cancel both promises. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.